Hello everyone and welcome back to Charlotte and Kate. I am going to be sharing 21 books that I really want to read in 2021. I'm probably not going to go into like extreme detail with every single book I mention. I'll just briefly tell you maybe what it's about and why I want to read it. Let's get into it. Um, so the first book is Human Acts by Hang Kang. I love Hang Kang's work and from the books that have currently been translated in English this is the only one I haven't read of hers yet. So I've read The Vegetarian and The White Book and then also oh, she did a short story as well which was like a precursor to The Vegetarian. I've read that one as well probably like put it on the screen what it's actually called because I can't remember it right now. This book takes place during the the Guangzhou yeah the Guangzhou uprising in 1980 which is a major political and it, it just changed the face of Korea um, forever um, for like there was student uprisings there was a mass shooting um, but this takes place during that time and it's um, apparently quite a hard read so I've been putting it off for a while but I, I love her prose and I really want to get to this one this year. Next book we have is The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Gul Gulbachev, no that's Gorbachev, that is not an author, that is one of the leaders of the Soviet Union, let's try again. The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This is like magical realism, satire. Basically the devil comes to Moscow, naturally, and causes havoc. And this is a modern classic of Russian literature. I have been meaning to read this for quite a few years now. So maybe 2021 is the time to actually read it. Uh, it's this, the kind of book that I, I put off because I feel like I know that I'm going to really enjoy it but then part of me is also kind of nervous, N not really nervous but I kind of feel like oh what if I don't like it and then what does that even mean but who knows uh, maybe I'm just being weird but yeah I definitely want to read this one this year. Next one is Doppler by Erland Lowe. It's a book translated from Norwegian and I've been recently really getting into Scandinavian literature because I'm actually learning Norwegian. I'm learning a few different languages like I'm learning French, Norwegian and Korean. What I quite often do when I'm learning languages is delve into their literature and um, so I've, I've already read one of Erland Lowe's books and I really enjoyed it so I thought I would get to this one as soon as possible. It's about a man that retreats into the woodlands and I believe he becomes friends with a moose or something like that or an elk, I'm not too sure. Uh, a baby elk, yes, yeah, so he finds a baby elk called Bongo, which is quite cute. I will be looking forward to getting to this and the front cover is quite nice and colourful so it feels like it's going to be a cheery, easy read which sometimes you just need that. Next book I want to get to is Dark Forest by Sitchin Lu. I believe my pronunciation is probably miles wrong, but this is the second book in the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed the... Oh, what is it called? Um, third Body Problem, that's it. Um, I pretty much read that in like lightning fast speed. I'm quite a slow reader so when I read something really fast it, it means it's a good book and I was completely hooked on it. The trilogy is about humanity's first contact with aliens and I can't wait to continue with the trilogy. I will probably actually finish the whole trilogy this year but I thought I would just mention The Dark Forest as one of the 21 books. <sighs> Look at this cover. Isn't she a beauty? This copy of a portrait of the artist as a young man is absolutely gorgeous. It's the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. I love how vibrant the colours are. And that image of the man looking over the sea, that's evocative of a um, 
oh, another painting and I can't remember what it's called. I might just flash up the image quickly because I feel like I need to share this, but yeah, it's it's very evocative of a particular painting that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> Um, never mind, let's move on. Basically, I don't really know much about this novel, I just know that it's James Joyce and I wasn't quite ready for Ulysses yet. Ulysses, Ulysses. Um, so I thought I would start with this one. Now for something non-fiction, I think this is the only non-fiction book on my list, but it is Fear by... Uh, oh, Tick. Nat Hum. Probably butchered that as well. I mean, what it says on the back, mindfulness can give us courage. And to be honest, in the world that we're in at the moment, I think we could all use a little less of this and a little more courage. So I will be reading this year. Um, I did write a blog post on my blog about... Um, fear of death recently because it's been plaguing me non-stop to the point that I've been kept awake sometimes for hours and hours at night freaking out about it so I think I will read this and hopefully this will help me become a little bit normal again. Next book we have is another sci-fi and um, this is Le Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. Season 5 of The Expanse started the other day so I was like oh man I really need to read these books and I've had this like the first one on my shelf for quite a while so I thought uh, what is a better time to start reading it this year when you're waiting for the last season. If you've watched the show then you know that it's awesome and yeah hopefully this will just kind of go even deeper than the show does which is why we read as well as watch adaptations really isn't it oh yeah and i've also started reading this book that's the problem with me i have about 100 different books on the go at any one time um i, I don't even know when i started reading this but i haven't read much um right anyway next book we've got is brett easton ellis's the rules of attraction i love this cover like it's just literally people's legs intertwined bit risque um but yeah i actually got this one second hand because i didn't like the new covers that they've been doing like they're just ugly i will insert a picture of it here because ooh, gross so yeah i had to track this down i had to even return one because they used this as the picture and then when it came it was ugly so then i had to return it and then i finally got the right version. This is basically set in the same universe as American Psycho which I've only watched the movie but I am kind of obsessed with it. It is hilarious. But yeah this follows three college students and it's like, I don't know, weird. A tour of the Heart of Darkness and more Armageddon. Oh sounds exciting. That was set by the time. It's gonna be funny but then also kind of deplorable maybe who knows but yeah i feel like ellis's reputation precedes him and i don't know whether i'm expecting what i should be expecting from this novel but either way it sounds quite intriguing and uh, i would like to read it this year oh hello there the fellowship of the ring believe it or not i absolutely love 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 lord of the rings movies i have the extended editions and I, I could probably just sit there and marathon them. But anyway, I haven't actually ever read the source material, which is kind of crazy, considering that I love the movie so much. You would have thought that I would have read it sooner. I've had this book for years, and I've picked it up many times and started reading it, but then just haven't progressed any further. And I don't quite know why. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood. Um, for a long time, I didn't know that I actually needed glasses so because this text is so small look at it I would just find my eyes aching and I'd be like oh my god what is going on oh, can't read this but yeah it turns out I need glasses so maybe like I will read this now that I know that I can read it without getting eye ache I don't even know what I'm saying but everyone knows what this book is about I kind of feel a mild shame about not reading it yet um so we will definitely read this this year next up we have got pachinko 
by Min Jin Lee. This is set during Japan's occupation of Korea, which happened around about, I don't know whether it's exactly 1911, but that's when this book starts. It's about a young woman that marries a Christian minister and moves to Japan. That's kind of all I know about this, but everyone raves about it. And to be honest, this cover is absolutely gorgeous. And um, I've been meaning to read this again, like all of these books, for a very long time. And I'm, I'm really quite interested in Korean history because I've read a lot of short stories from this kind of era with censorship and um, sort of the resentment on colonization from the Japanese so it will be interesting to read a modern novel about that time so yeah I can't wait to read this. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. I have heard literally nothing but amazing things about this trilogy. Um, this is the first book and really I should have read it by now. That, that's all I need to say really. Um, I don't know why I haven't read it yet but I really want to. So I think it's a post-apocalyptic novel, there's mystery, I think there's murder. Yeah, so I, I'm really interested in reading this as soon as possible. Outline by Rachel Kusk. Isn't this just such a beautiful cover? Like, oh, so simple, so minimalistic, my jam. And to be honest, this novel, I remember picking it up in books shop when <laughs> There was like a lull in the pandemic before everything went to shit again. I told my sister what it was about and she was like, oh, that sounds a bit pretentious. But to be honest, it sounds so up my street. It's about a young woman that goes to teach a creative writing course in Athens for a summer. And the story is told in 10 conversations, which I just thought was a unique way of formatting a novel. So I'm really excited to read this. I've heard a lot of good things about this again. And I think it also is part of a trilogy, so maybe we'll read the rest of the trilogy. Who knows? Next up, we have a classic by none other than Gustave Flaubert. Ooh, um, I got this second hand because, I mean, there's just something cool about classics that are second hand. I don't know why. And, I mean, just second-hand books in general are quite interesting. But yeah, when you think about them, like, second-hand books, it's been on a journey. Like, every single person reads the story and gets something different out of it. And then, in a way, you're connected to these random strangers that have also enjoyed this book. Yeah, maybe that's just me romanticising second-hand books. I read Madame Bovary last year and really, really enjoyed it. So I, I am looking forward to reading more of Flaubert's work. This one follows Frédéric Moreau. Yeah, we'll stop with the French accent. And he becomes sort of enamoured, um, potentially obsessed with this older woman. And this just chance this, I think it probably is unrequited, love affair that he has with her. So yeah, it sounds quite fun. A tortured young Frenchman falling in love with an older woman who is married. Who wouldn't want to read this? Escapism. Birds by Tarje Vassars. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a translation of a Norwegian novel. But isn't this such a beautiful cover? Like, I love the pastels and just how, like, he blends in with the background. It's about a young man called Matthias and his sister Hegge who cares for him and people call him simple and things like that so he's quite a naive character and his sister soon falls in love and this looks to disrupt the balance of everything he's ever known and I think that um, just sounds like such a compelling story. Literary review calls this a masterpiece. Doo -doo. Angela Carter's Wise Children. I love Angela Carter. Um, she was a brilliant writer and I just love the way she has such flowery prose. Like she isn't for everyone, I'll say that, but I just love how everything just her writing has this texture to it and it's just so flamboyant and verbose and just flowery and The Bloody Chamber is one of my favourite books ever and um, last year I read Heroes and Villains by her and fell in love with that one so I'm going to continue the trend of falling in love with Angela Carter even more didn't think it was possible but 
this year I'm going to be reading Wise Children. What it says here, a richly comic tale of the tangled fortunes of two theatrical families, the hazards and chances. I don't know whether it's going to be almost like Romeo and Juliet with the Montagues and the Capulet, but it just kind of gives me that vibe. So I'm expecting drama because um, they're theatrical, but even more drama, maybe. It just sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, okay. There is something to do with Shakespeare in this. So it definitely is kind of in that vein of dramatics, Shakespeare, and potentially borrowing sort of themes and uh, motifs from Shakespeare himself as well. So this should be interesting. A funny, funny book. That's what I expect from Angela. <laughs> Talking as if I know her. The Castle by Franz Kafka. Iconic, nightmarish, Kafkaesque. <laughs> um, this tells the story of Kay who goes to a castle and I think he gets stuck there or something. This was the last novel of Franz Kafka and he didn't actually finish it so that in itself is quite interesting. I did actually start reading this years and years ago when I was at school. I think I was in primary school. Um, yeah I was in year six and I found a copy of this book in my classroom and I started reading it and I was like oh my god this is so good. I don't think I understood any of it but I was like oh my god this is so good. And then one day it disappeared from my classroom and I don't know where the hell it went and I was really annoyed and then I couldn't find it for years. I don't know how I couldn't find it because the key things I remembered from it was the protagonist was called Kay and there was a castle. The most distinguishing features of the book and I couldn't find it for some reason. Who knows what happened there? Maybe I was just an idiot and didn't know how to Google things back then. I don't really need to tell you about this book. It is iconic. If you mention The Castle by Ka Franz Kafka, you just know that it's a book that you should read. Part of the canon of modern literature. Next up we have Kafka on the shot. It seems as if I deliberately used this as a segue from Kafka to Kafka. Literally, I just made a pile of books and this just happened to come under that one. It kind of works. We'll stick with it. Kafka on the Shore. This is probably Murakami's second best known novel. First being Norwegian Wood, um, which I've already read and absolutely adore. This is probably one of his most surreal works and it follows two dual storylines. One of a boy and then one of an old man. There's talking cats, there's weird stuff. It's just classic Murakami and I am a pretty big fan of Murakami as you can probably see behind me. <laughs> um, literally most of my bookshelf is taken up by his works but I love him and I am sort of just going very slowly through his work. I think at the moment I've only read like four full novels and quite a few of his short stories but it's the sort of thing like when you've got good bottle of wine or like an exquisite cup of coffee you just want to savour every moment of it so that's what I'm doing with Murakami very slowly going through his work so that I can savour it and then at some point reread everything again and again and again <laughs> for eternity Ooh. next up we have Carl Ulver no news nose guard nose guard Knus, Knus, Knus guard, Knus guard. Someone, please correct me in the comments below. So this is the first in his very, very famous My Struggle series. Um, in England, they've avoided the the title because in Norwegian it sounds very, very, very almost identical to Hitler's barbaric autobiography min camp um my struggle so in england they've sort of avoided that and very aptly given each book its main title and then up here very small i don't know if you can even see it it says my struggle one <laughs> oh dear oh hello are we matching oh look at that i love the cover of this it's so simple. Um, oh no, it's also got my struggle down there. So it's not as discreet as I'm making it out to be, but still like got an autobiographical work. And it's one of six, I believe. And it just charts canoe scots journey through life. This one, 
I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be quite depressing, a death in a family. I think it's his father that dies. Um, so it's going to explore sort of his relationship with his father and just generally his life. Um, I mean, the Observer on the back says quite exquisitely, a masterpiece. Its depiction of a family's disintegration is one of the most powerful pieces of writing I've read in years. So that in itself sounds really interesting. A lot of people say this is boring, but that's part of its charm. I feel like it's going to be quite a slow read, but almost like monotony, but in a good way. I don't really know. Like maybe it's just all about sort of slow living and just looking at details in life and exploring it that way. And yes, this is also another Norwegian book translated into English. I feel like most of the books I actually read nowadays are actually translations, which I think is important to sort of explore world literature and step outside the Western canon, because really you need to read outside of your experiences. I've read so many books in the past year that have sort of expanded the way I thought, like one of the best books I've ever read is Seasons of Migration to the North. I read this last year and it was just mesmerising. It's a post-colonial novel set in Sudan. Um, so it explores black culture and black Arab culture and the after effects of colonisation. And it really kind of opened my eyes to a lot of ignorance. So I'm probably going to try and track down more of Tayeb Sali's books next year, next year, this year, but I won't be putting him on my list just yet because I don't have any of his novels. Back to the program, we have The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Bavois. This is a collection, I believe, of four short stories. Nope, three short stories. <laughs> In three immensely intelligent stories about the decay of passion. I do love it when reviews, I probably do this myself as well, use the word decay. It's such a powerful word and so when something says it's the decay of something I'm instantly intrigued because it just sounds so dramatic. I love this cover, I actually saw it in a Instagram post of Jean Damas, it was on her bookshelf and I was like OMG I need to get a copy of this book because it just looks so cool. But yeah, it's about decay of passion and women in crisis. Oh, the next one I'm pretty excited about. This is the portrait of Dorian Gray, but this in itself is a rather remarkable version of said book. It's quite chunky and Dorian Gray is not that big of a book. And the main reason why this one's quite chunky is because it is a dual language edition. It's got the French translation right next to the English original. My sister bought this for me for my birthday last year and I mean I swear like she knows me more than I know myself sometimes <laughs> but oh I've, I've been trying to learn French for years and I'm failing so badly because I get distracted by other languages like I just hear a language and I'm just like oh beauty and start learning it like Norwegian I started watching a Norwegian TV show last year and I was like oh my god beautiful and I started learning the language and then forgot about French for a while because I'd got to the point where it was just getting too difficult we're gonna learn French this year and Dorian Gray is going to help me Oscar Wilde is magnificent he's such a witty bastard and I can't wait to read this novel in French and English made it to the end of the list Wow, what a journey it's been. The final book that I definitely want to read this year, I don't know why I keep leaning on them, it's just like, oh, you're my friend. <laughs> I think it's because we can't have physical contact with other humans in this day and age that I'm starting to become cuddly with my books. Send help. This is Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. <sighs> is this cover not one of the most beautiful covers you've ever seen. Gorgeous. Um, this is another sci-fi novel and it's set in the very 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 near future 2025 <gasps> and the world is F-U-C-K-E-D. Oh wait, hang on a minute. This is too eerie maybe. <laughs> this follows a young woman who is a empath and her journey through a destroyed America. Really looking forward to this. I also do have the 
second book in the duology which I will probably read this year as well. So that is a wrap on my 21 books that I really want to read in 2021. Hope you enjoyed. Click the subscribe button down below and you'll get plenty more where this came from. <laughs> I'm so cringe. Basically what I'm trying to ask is if you'd like more of this content then just click the subscribe button, hit the bell and make some comments down below on what other book content you'd like to see.